Spago Nanomedical is a Swedish nanomedicine company in clinical development phase aimed at enhancing medical imaging and targeting uh, therapies. It is led by Mats Hansen, who is here with me. Welcome, Mats. Thank you. Thank nice you to be for here. being here. Could you please provide an overview of Spago's core technology and how it stands out in the field of nanomedicine? Absolutely. So uh, we develop new pharmaceuticals with a special focus on radio pharmaceuticals and medical imaging. And the core of our expertise is, is a re revolves around a technology, a platform that is tailored for use in cancer medicine. So based on that platform, we aim to improve healthcare in two ways. First of all, uh, and where we're coming from is the medical imaging side, where we develop the technology. And what we want to do there is to improve the precision in medical imaging, especially for cancer. That has led us, because we now have clinical uh, evidence of that it works, we, into uh, radio pharmaceuticals, which is actually where our main focus is right, right now, where we see the big value. Because here we have the opportunity to use our platform in a way to expand effective radio pharmaceuticals into different types of tumors, not just the ones that are currently addressed by those, th that type of technology. So what milestones have you achieved already? So, I mean, the, the biggest milestone for us so far was to get into clinical trials, into mm -hmm. clinical phase with Tumorad, which is our radio pharmaceutical program, uh, and to start that trial in Australia. Uh, and we recently announced that, that the data monitoring committee uh, thinks that the first three patients are doing well and we are now progressing with further recruitment of further patients. So, so far, I mean, that, that has really transformed Spargo to become a true clinical stage company, not just, you know, being very focused on discovery for in the past. We have now passed two uh, programs into clinical trials. So that's, that's definitely the biggest step so far. And you mentioned Australia, right? Yeah, exactly. Why there? Well, it turns out Australia provides a really good framework for doing clinical trials. There is an excellent healthcare system. They are used to clinical trials. The regulatory pathway to come into clinic is shorter than in Europe and in Sweden. Uh, and there is also substantial tax reliefs. Uh, so we get paid back for for uh, a lot of money for, for what we have spent there. So, so there are many, many different positive things that speaks for Australia. And uh, are you going to continue with Australia when you get to the market or? I mean, we, we, this is, we are now in phase one, really. Yeah. So it's, it's, even though we're in the clinic, it's early days, of course. Yeah. Uh, and we eventually, uh, intend to expand the, the, you know, the clinical program into further territories, of course, especially as the number of patients needed will increase in, for instance, in phase two and so on. But for now, I mean, we're, we're really happy to run in Australia and it's been smooth so far. Are there any competition? You mean in the radio pharmaceutical space? Yeah, uh, yeah and I because mean, you were targeting a specific method, right? Well, that, that's, the, that's the thing here. We, we really have a technology that sets us apart and makes us unique compared to many of the other radio pharmaceuticals because we are, in a way, targeting the tumors by physiological means, not molecular means. So that, that, that gives us the opportunity to go into tumor types where no one else can because they are working with molecular targets and need you know, specific... Uh, receptors to be expressed and so on and we don't so that that really sets us apart but i mean the radio pharmaceutical field as a whole uh, is really hot right now i mean many of the big pharma companies are are now active in the field and there are lots of deals being done and so on especially after artificial intelligence uh... well i maybe i don't know yeah I mean, uh, what we see typically is Novartis is taking the lead in the field, but they are closely followed by like BMS and Astra and, and uh, Bayer, of course, and, and other big pharma companies. And it's definitely, I mean, we are definitely a, a, at the ship, shift in cancer medicine in that sense that we are now employing radioactivity, which we know works 
to to defeat cancer, but in a different way. We are not just you know re relying on external beams and so on. We are now putting pharmaceuticals in the body of the cancer patients, and we can mm -hmm. still we can treat the tumors wh where they are in the body. And how uh, has the financial part uh, been going? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's no secret like everybody else. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's times are tough. We, yeah. we have been uh, lucky enough to have very strong owners who has been backing us and are backing us still uh, quite a lot. So we're, we're very grateful for that. Uh, so what should your investors expect from you? I mean, what, what we're looking at now is a f the, f the next readout in the clinical trial, of course, uh, w which I expect to happen uh, next year and onwards, and then to finalize the, the phase one and uh, prepare to, for phase two and, and to have a really good plan for phase two and, and the steps beyond that so that we can present an attractive case to potential partners and take this forward. And my last question, why is this a good business case? Well, I think, as I said, radio pharmaceuticals is definitely hot right now. Uh, we have the opportunity to treat cancers in a different way and to add to, uh, to other therapies and to add, in our case, to add also to other radiopharmaceuticals in, in the sense that I mentioned that we, we can attack cancers in a different way. Very well. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. And good luck. Thanks. Thanks.